I worked, and then I said, when I got uh, got with a, uh, a woman, Irene Williams, was uh, got with her, and we got married. And I was married for 60, 63 years, and I raised uh, three three boys and two girls. So there, and I had a stepdaughter. So they are. So there's six of them all together. When uh, when we were growing up in Brackendale, my mother, all she did was talk Squamish to us all the time. There was no English. Talked to Squamish, and there was a lot of old people that talked uh, Squamish all the time. So we were talking Squamish, and I was talking Squamish all the time. Now, like when I say, when I went logging, I had a hard time when I speak uh, English. Because I didn't know any how to talk, speak English. The loggers had just went and the uh, went and just point at the log what they were supposed to do. That was English, and then after that, we we're talking Squamish right from today. I'm still talking my language yet, and I never forgot it. I never forget. It's hard to forget, but if we can get it going, with all the childrens. We we'll have to get them back, because most of all the tribes are losing all their their language. My mother liked to plant. She had a big garden, Marine Drive, where Park Oil is now. My dad built a cellar, so to keep the potatoes and everything cool. He could make a canoes and he comes up to Squamish River here, goes cutting boat knees. The boat knees were for making ribs for the boats, skiffs. He was a, he's, he liked to be his own boss, so that's what he became of his fisherman, a great fisherman in Knights Inlet, Rivers Inlet. Made a lot of money. My mother worked in the cannery. She made a lot of money. After I was 14, my mother said I better go to work. So I was working for 50 cents an hour. I was happy about that. Three months, I made $300. I was so happy. Bought my mother a linoleum floor and uh, Bought her some other things. Bought my own self a bed and bedroom suite for $89 in a pawn shop. Just, just like brand new. I wasn't foolish with my money. So I know how hard it is to make it. So I was very careful. <clears throat> I wouldn't go eat in the restaurant by myself. I wouldn't go eat anywhere by myself. I had to wait for my mom, my dad, for going to public anywhere, stores. It's very shy. I just wanted to share a story with you about my granny. Rosie Ross Stager. Uh, she was a very, very knowledgeable woman. <clears throat> when I was growing up with her, I used to go uh, with her home visits, and because she was a midwife, she delivered a lot of babies at Mount Curry. I remember, well, back then there was no highway, so when the doctor came into town, maybe once a month, twice a month, he first place he would go is to see my granny, and so, well, Rosie, how many babies did you deliver? And she'd let them know, and she was a cedar basket weaver, and she had great big gardens, and and she uh, a lot of herbs. She used a lot of herbs for medicine. Anybody that needed something that ailed them, she always had a special tea or a salve, all natural. And I remember we were in the garden, I got really frustrated. I says, oh, Granny, how come you got so many big gardens? And I'm like six, seven, eight. 
you know, up in the years, nine, ten, and why do you have so many gardens? So she put a little patch under the crab apple tree on the ground, and she says, see this square here? She divided up three different sections. She says, this section here is for us, for the plow, to pay for the plow and buy our seed. And this other section here is for us to eat uh, for, and live. And there was always one little extra section in the in the pattern and it's what's that for a granny she's oh that's for the thieves you always plant a little extra the, for the people that don't have i went oh okay so when you're weeding the garden you kind of understood after well this is for us this is for <clears throat> it's for survival and this is for the plow and this is for the people that don't have <laughs> This picture here is of my grandfather, Fred Downer Sr. And he is and he's sitting down in the picture with my grandmother and she was Squamish Nation and her name was Marie Mack. They married and had seven children. Uh, my grandfather was one of the first engineers on the rail. You see rail here. My name is Donna Billy. I'm a member of this, the Billy family, Moses and Bertha Billy. My ancestral name is Cecilia, which means hardworking woman. And it, this name comes from Bertha Billy's mother, Emma Douglas. Uh, Moses and Bertha Billy raised me from a young child into a young woman. And by that, I was raised by the community. That's how I look at it from the late Sadie Baker. Um, Pena, Josephine Williams, Laura Williams, uh, Madge, El Madge Elliott, Brackets Lewis, who married Louis Lewis. My great grandfather is Dominic Charlie, and my great grandmother is Josephine Charlie. My my father, late father, is Louis Lewis Senior. So I'm related to people in Darcy, um, Lillooet. Mount Curry. Um, that is where I found out a lot of the intermarrying into the Squamish Nation. I'm running for Squamish District Council. 
So I'm seeking a seat on this, this council, and I think it's going to set precedent in the, in the future. With our young people now, our First Nations women are just stepping up to the plate now. And I would like to be a really good role model for our people, letting them know it's never too late to run for any type of office. My name is Swanamia, uh, an, an ancestral name that was given to me by my dad um, a few years ago. And um, I share that name with a sister who lives near me. Uh, she's the second oldest. I'm the oldest of the family. That name, Swanamia, uh, she's the last traditional woman alive in the 60s. Uh, she was married to uh, Chief Katsulano. Uh, my English name is Diana Billy. My father is Richard Billy, hereditary chief, uh, Chief Siamkan, and my mother Kikiak. Uh, her name, her English name is Anna Billy, and she comes from Lilawat Nation. So I'd like to talk about my mother Kikiak. This is her outfit that she wore when she went out to do something important. Um, her buckskin that she made, she would wear that. And the th some of the things that she's made, she learned from her mother when she was very young. Because young meaning like when she was four or five years old. Maybe uh, because her mother died when she was eight or nine years old. So she learned from my mother how to weave baskets and different fibers together. And this is a, a cape made out of cedar bark. But my dad would wear that when he's got to do something important. He'll wear that cedar cape uh, made out of the inner cedar, cedar bark of the tree. My parents are Moses Billy and Bertha Billy. Uh, my grandparents uh, on my mom's side is Dominic Charlie and Dodie. I just know her by Dodie. And my grandfather on my dad's side is Billy Snow Williams. And he had a, he had a many a wife, so I can't name them all. Uh, I was one of the six boys and uh, five girls that were alive at the time when I was born. There was a few of my brothers and my sisters that passed on before I was born. We had a big family. My dad and my brothers, my uncles were all working, logging. They were all loggers, but they were fishermen. They were trappers, hunters. My dad used to go on a seine boat up the coast. Like my uncle Austin Harry, he used to go up. Um, the last place I knew where he was was uh, Knights Inlet with his whole family, with my cousins Ernie Harry, George Harry. My auntie, Molly Harry. Well, I was watching my dad work as a father, or my brothers as a boob man, but watching the other men, how they worked as a chokerman, chaser, bucking and on the land, and well, I took that up. And I worked for year, maybe a year, a year and a half, and I'd get home, my mom would be doing my clothes and ask me why all my clothes are so dirty. I said, oh, well, don't wash them, mom, we'll just throw them away, we'll buy new ones in my payday. She just laughed and washed my clothes. And then my cousins, Ernie Harry, George Harry, and my um, uncle, Steve Charlie, Brother Ron, and then uh, cousins Norm Lewis, Al Lewis, and there was quite a few of them working on the boom. And uh, the first job was with Norm Cowdell, N.C. Tone, and that's where I went. I told um, my cousins Ernie and George, yeah, you just want to drown me, you guys, that's why you brought me down here. And that was 1956, I think it was when I went across the mouth of the river working on the booms. <laughs>